We are in the home of Anayit Mirijanyan in Gyumri, yeah. Armenia's mm -hmm. second largest city. I would say a very beautiful city where you were born and raised. You're an assistant professor of English. Yeah. Uh, and from what I understand, for 35 years at uh, the Gyumri State Pedagogical Institute, yes. you taught English. Yes, I taught English for nearly 35 years at the English department. We have got a department, English department there. And uh, we've got an English chair, mm -hmm. so I've been teaching stylistics, phonetics, and uh, I'm happy to have taught at that institute. Well, you've taught generations of Armenians, and yeah. uh, being a teacher is one of the greatest gifts, I think, uh, that we bestow on, on future generations, and uh, your English yeah. is superb. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but um, I also... Uh, you know, when we were driving uh, the, the two-hour journey from Yerevan to Gimri, yeah. we were talking in the car and, um, you know, somebody said that you are a very well-known and well-loved personality oh, in Gimri. thank you. <laughs> and um, not because of who your husband is, which we'll get to, but because <laughs> of the compassion uh, and love that you show towards your fellow Armenian in, in, in your native city. Uh, and Gimri is a city that has suffered a lot of tragedy. Yeah. Um, so you were here during the 1988 earthquake. I was with all my friends, with my students. We were at the institute, and uh, uh, many of my colleagues uh, perished, fell victim to that disaster. And we thought that it was the end of the world, so uh, nothing will continue. But after that, we found some energy and uh, love for the students, for the city, and we tried to. <laughs> Raise, rise just from the ruins and we stayed here and we went on working and building and uh, I don't know teaching and even in 1989 we organized the Christmas party here in Gyumri so uh, not everybody uh, had an adequate uh, attitude towards this they said in this town a Christmas party they've gone mad <laughs> but we did it and we were happy to see that our students eyes were again filled with hope Yes. 25 years now have passed mm. and we revisit this topic often um, and perhaps our viewers would say you know 25 years it was an earthquake that took place you know uh, you know quarter century ago and yet we still need to talk about it because I think there are a lot of wounds that haven't healed beyond the physical yeah. uh, wounds um, and I know that Gimri is a city full of people who, who still carry those that trauma yeah a lot of people and uh, you are right when you say this is not only um, a physical ruin so psychologically people were greatly depressed and uh, I think it will take again some more years for them to recover um, but I think that we shall not give up yeah yeah I think that is the spirit of the people yeah. of the city that they they, they yes. do continue to struggle for uh, to move forward it was uh, 1988. Um, it was also uh, a few months after the Gharapag movement yeah. began uh, in, in Nagorno Gharapag, in Yerevan, and I'm also assuming in Gyumri. In Gyumri as well, yeah. Uh, were you part of that? I mean, how, what, you know, we've interviewed people who were younger at that time, but you know, we're more or less the same age. Um, what did it mean to you, that movement? That movement me meant. Uh, to gain independence, freedom, to get rid of this Soviet regime. But unfortunately, one regime uh, was replaced by another one. And uh, I think that uh, we are to go on and to develop. And uh, I don't know, it was for freedom, for independence. Uh, we, you know, there were certain cliches during the Soviet regime, and we strived for something new, something fresh. Uh, but alas for Font Hope's ruined. One, for one thing, it was nice that we gained independence. Uh, but for another, uh, we had to face certain difficulties and hardships. And uh, today I would like to see Armenia really free and really independent, which is uh, uh, still, a dream. still a dream. Yeah. <laughs> but but we, go, we go on dreaming. Dream, yeah. yeah, of course. Um, being in the teaching profession for 35 years, um, just to get back to education because I'm sure it's a very important and integral part of your life uh, and you uh, taught during the Soviet era and you've taught now post-independence. Uh, oftentimes I will hear um, 
from my uh, friends and colleagues mm -hmm. uh, that during the Soviet era the level of education was much better after independence. Um, there was, um, you know, due to the you know very severe problems that Armenia faced. Uh, now, 22 years into independence, how do you see the level of education uh, in Gyumri or in Yerevan? Or well, in Armenia, in yeah, Armenia, in Armenia. Way, yeah. Okay, I would say that I quite agree with you and you say that the education, students benefited from the education during the Soviet regime, but uh, it, it still needed some improvement and development because uh, we had that military regime in the schools as well. And uh, we hoped that uh, by gaining independence we would improve the education as well. But unfortunately, there are so many drawbacks and shortcomings in our society and in our lives, everyday life, that uh, come from uh, education, because it is not on the on the proper level. Because uh, what what is the main culture of education? Uh, it is to teach and to learn. But students don't learn with pleasure. They don't enjoy the learning process. You know, and uh, uh, on the whole. It is not, the education is not already learning and teaching, but taking tests, writing tests. <laughs> it's um, very, it's it's very much rote learning, yeah. isn't it? It's memorization. And the teachers forgot to uh, arouse curiosity in their students. Uh, they, they, they forgot that, in fact, curiosity is the main uh, engine of achievement. And uh, uh, what, uh, what I would like to see in our schools is uh, uh, love of teachers towards their students, for their students, and encouraging them, stimulating them, mentoring them, and uh, arousing curiosity, and giving them uh, a chance of being uh, creative, and to approach every child as an individual. As a and uh, what we do, in fact, is standardizing everything and everywhere. And uh, as a consequence, we have got uh, uh, what we have uh, today. now today. Yes, and uh, uh, the main scale of values nowadays uh, is uh, the love and appreciation of uh, material wealth. You know, you, I, I, you said something and you repeated the word love. Yeah. And, and lately I've been thinking about that term, uh, love not in the sense of personal relationships yeah. necessarily, but love toward your profession, yes. love toward your city, your community, your country, your nation. That should be the starting point. Yes. Because if you don't have that love, nothing will nothing will be achieved, you know. So, and uh, uh, I think that we shall start from kindergartens, from schools, and further from universities. And if we don't do this, if we don't improve the educational process and the attitude, teachers' attitudes towards their mm, profession and students' attitude toward lear towards learning, nothing will change in this country. Believe me. Yeah. Well, speaking of love. Uh, I want to talk, if, if you don't mind, a little bit about your personal life okay. and uh, what I imagine has been the love of your life is your husband and your son. Yeah. Uh, your husband is known not only in Gyumri uh, but in Armenia as Jag. Yes, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> and Jag, which comes from the, the, the singer Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones, okay. because your husband uh, was the founder, creator, and lead singer of one of Armenia's most beloved uh, rock, folk rock bands uh, called Bambir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I remember many, many years ago <coughs> when I was working um, as an editor for, for, for a newspaper and uh, we had done a story about the fact that the sons, the two sons of the original band, yeah. uh, Bambir, had created their new band. So it was a generational transitional thing that had taken yes, place. They have got much in common with the senior generation, but at the same time, they differ a lot from them, yes. But there is much in common, you know. Um, so tell me a little bit about what life is as not only an assistant professor of English, which is a very yeah. proper mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. accepted profession, okay. but also the wife of a rock star, if we may call him uh, that, which, uh, we, yeah. we, which we most certainly can. I don't know whether he's a star or not in our country, but he's a gifted musician, he's a talented one. Uh, it has been very easy to live my life with such a man, but at the same time it had got its difficulties, you know. Uh, yes, it was easy because uh, it was easy to uh, 
live by the side of a man who was so gifted, who is so gifted, who understands everything, uh, who is so tender-hearted, um, but at the same time uh, it promised certain inconveniences in the family life because uh, both during the Soviet regime and during now we have to earn a lot of money in order to cover the expenses of a, of a concert. We are not adapted to these new uh, rules and regulations of showbiz, you know. And we have to, uh, we had to earn at least uh, a lot of money to buy a simple mi microphone, right. which was very difficult to find during these Soviet times. We asked our friends and relatives to bring these things from abroad, and we worked day and night in order to cover all these expenses. And uh, even if they uh, gave concerts, they didn't earn enough money because, to you know, yes, to cover the expenses. And uh, so, uh, besides this, it was very difficult for such a person as Jag was um, to live in certain, uh, under certain restrictions, right. you know. Right. And uh, there was no other place to. Uh, uh, to express his uh, discontent, perhaps. Uh, except through his except music. His, his, except his music and... And uh, you. And me, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, of course. Sometimes I had, to, I had to stand all this and uh, we together overcame all these difficulties. Uh, Anna, you're, <coughs> you grew up, um, you know, we, we grew up in the 60s and 70s. Um, at a time when Soviet Armenia was going through um, changes. I mean, in the 60s, there was the whole movement with, you know, the 50th anniversary of the genocide and demanding recognition from the Soviet Union, and then there was the dissident movement, and um, so it was a very interesting time. Did that influence, do you think, um, their music or, or or your relationships or your um, your values even? You know, of course, the values. Uh, um, uh, when I was at school, so uh, I didn't understand who's who. So I thought that we lived in the best country in the world and we felt safe, you know. Everything happened everywhere but not in the Soviet Union. But later on, as we grew older and older, we uh, uh, just uh, discovered something new. Uh, and uh, as to Jack, he was uh, more mature during that period. When we go back uh, in our memories, and I speak about my sensations during that period, he says, no, I didn't think that way. Mm -hmm. So he, even then, he realized, okay, um, He's a sage, I would tell you, yeah. yes. And uh, by the way, he, he, he has gone deep into Chinese philosophy. And uh, even then, he could tell the right from the wrong. But I was, uh, I was not uh, able to see all these things. Later on, when I became a student, of course, I discovered a lot of things for me. Though I realized that it was safe for the older generation to live in that sort of country. But we wanted some new challenges. We wanted to challenge the, the old and technic way of living and uh, we wanting something new, something fresh from abroad. We got albums, we got discs, we This was in the 70s, right? The literature in the 80s. that was not allowed to read and every day we discovered something new for us and we had a dream. Uh, it, it's nice when a person lives with a dream. And Jag and his band uh, had that dream and they did everything they did everything they could to realize that dream and uh, I think that everything influenced uh, influenced their music uh, the, the situation in Armenia I don't know uh, sure. perhaps he he would be uh, the man who would answer that question what influenced him but I know that their music was very very original not like the rest you know and uh, there was some uh, fresh spell, okay, in their music. And first I saw them uh, during a music festival, which was held here in Gyumri, and some bands were what from... Year was this? It, it was in 1979, mm -hmm. if, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't know him at that time. I had just come back from Yerevan, from my... Uh, I, I had just graduated from the institute. And uh, I was present at that uh, festival. I went mad. I went crazy. <laughs> I, s I just rose from my seat and I, I asked my friends, what band is it? Mm -hmm. And uh, they say, I, I, we think it, it is called Bambir, so it was not well known then because uh, um, they they were They're just, just they, they were yes, and I liked them very much. And a year later, no, two years later, I met him at a Christmas party, 
and uh, we got introduced and uh, I sang a song after the party he said I fell in love Aww, and, that's so cute. Uh, and I realized that I was in love too I, I, I don't know now I can't tell whether I fell in love with his music with his art or with him uh, still now I can't when when we have a big argument. quarrel or argument uh, uh, he he switches on his uh, records and <laughs> I immediately <laughs> come down so he knows, <laughs> yes. he knows the he trick. reminds me who he <laughs> why is. you fell in love yes. with him <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those lines can be blurred sometimes, but talk to me briefly, if you may, about your son. I mean, how, obviously he grew up in a home and we're surrounded by all of these beautiful, beautiful instruments and books, and when we walked into your home, I said, oh, I can stay here forever. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's a very welcoming... <laughs> we are uh, ready to host you. We'll be very happy. <laughs> Thank you. No, but I mean... Uh -huh. For, for a child growing up, I, and, and you know, for him, of course, you know, I always say this, that for, for, for our children, Armenia was always independent. They didn't know that what the Soviet mm -hmm. Union was um, yeah. you know, once they learn about it in school. But I mean, for them, Armenia was always what it is now. But growing up in that very creative, very musical home, uh, how it influenced him or was it Jag or, or, or yourself, were you pushing him in that no, direction? No, no, We never pushed him. We never taught him to do this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, we perhaps served as models or as examples for him, but we deliberately, just on purpose, we didn't do anything with him. We let him grow uh, independently and he was free to choose anything that would occur to his mind. But uh, it so happened that when putting him to bed, he uh, used to listen to Jan Anderson, Jethro Tal, or Bambir, and it helped him to go to sleep. And then we had very many parties and gatherings here, and since Jag works uh, at the theater, we have very many friends, uh, uh, stage directors, I don't know, uh, painters and actors, they kept on coming to our place. We had very many discussions, and in fact, he grew up in this atmosphere of art and music and, uh, and uh, he often asked Jack to teach him uh, learn uh, to play the guitar. Jack said, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> Go and learn yourself. Nobody has taught me. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I wanted him to, well, teach him, but he didn't. So it so happened that in 1992 we went to uh, the USA um, with, a, with a theater and I joined them and uh, Narek was left to his own devices and one of our friends uh, came to take care of him. And when we came back, he started to play the guitar, but before that he couldn't. Mm -hmm. So, after 40 days of absence, we found Narek playing some music. So, and one of our friends who used to visit them um, taught him to play just some uh, chords. notes, yeah. some, some chords, yes. And uh, that was the beginning, <laughs> yes. And he taught this to Arman. And, uh, his friend uh, with whom he, uh, which is yes, the son of the and other. Uh, now he plays bass, uh, he plays the bass, Justin uh, Bambir, and his father was also a musician. He, pl he played bass in former Bambir, in senior Bambir. And so they started to just uh, mm, learn new things, and they uh, mm, tried to demonstrate this to Jack. Jack said, uh, not good. <laughs> That he never encouraged them. I say, why are you discouraging the children? Say that, that's all right. He said, no, if they are going to become bad musicians, let them become uh, farmers, or I don't remember yeah. what he said now. Yeah, and then uh, day by day, day by day, they add, add it to what they have already learned. And one day they gave a small concert. It was, if I'm not mistaken, during the first biennial in Gumri. And then after that, they went to the USA for a short visit and they played some small concerts in New York, in Los Angeles, in New Jersey, our friends helped them uh, and uh, they came back already uh, determined uh, and yes, like yes, and they said they were in their 10th form mm -hmm. 
at school and they said we are going to continue and uh, Narek chose his profession uh, as um, a stage director uh, he and Arman graduated from the Institute, State Institute of uh, Cinematography and Theatre in Yerevan and because they hadn't got enough knowledge to enter uh, conservatoire. Right, right. Yes. Because they didn't have formal yeah. musical training. Yes. Right. Anaid, you had a, a very interesting, interesting, creative, joyful, difficult, painful, life full of, I'm sure, very, very rich memories. And yes. yet I see this beautiful woman who has all of this energy and, um, you know, this soul that comes from your eyes. And you've had to manage a husband who's been, um, you know, a, a creator, a, a musician with the, his own internal yeah. uh, world. world. Yeah. Uh, and, and now you're navigating your son in that same <laughs> world. And there's Anahit trying to balance <laughs> all of that. Um, yes. It's not difficult. It's not you difficult. Know, because uh, someone has said uh, Beethoven or Leonardo da Vinci, they were given just the same uh, number of hours, amount of time uh, during the day, 24 hours, right. and so they managed to do such a lot of things. Well, you, you certainly are representative of what I've come to appreciate and what I've come to learn after, you know, living in Armenia for a number of years is the strength and vigor and vitality and commitment of the Armenian woman. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that you are a, a beautiful representative of what the Armenian woman is today in the 21st century in a free independent mm -hmm. Armenia that's trying to find its place in the world. Um, Thank you. Where, what, what's left for you uh, in your life in the future? Other than being a grandmother, which we all want to be. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want to be a grandmother, yes, yeah. this is my dream. <laughs> I love children, you know, yeah. I can't imagine my life without children, without students, without a young generation. Uh, uh, I want to see. I want to see my husband and my son um, uh, satisfied and content with art and music, with the level of culture in Armenia. I would like them to be appreciated, you know. And uh, I think that Narek has got uh, this opportunity. Um, I, I want to see this. Mm -hmm. I want him to be appreciated. And not only him, a lot of, a number of artists and That's musicians right. and people uh, having just some connection with art and uh, culture be appreciated. Yeah. Not after they've gone. But while they're living, uh, well, and but that ca that stems from unfortunately the distorted values that we've created over the yes. last several years, where we don't appreciate those people who contribute so much to our culture and heritage. But I have one last question. Yeah. So in 1979, when you first saw Jag, yeah. and then two years later you met at a Christmas party and you yeah. sang to him. Do you yes, still I sing do. to him? Yeah. You do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And does it help when you quarrel and you sing to him and then he remembers why he fell in love with you? <laughs> uh, sometimes, yes. <laughs> it works. Well, I hope he keeps creating and I hope you keep singing for him. And I hope you keep teaching children. And it was a real pleasure and honor for me to meet you in your beautiful me home too. in Gyumri. <laughs> Thank you for your visit. Thank, Thank you that you. <laughs> you called us. Thanks. When I'm gone, when I'm gone, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk, you're gonna miss me by my talk. Oh, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. When I'm gone, when I'm gone, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk, you're gonna miss me by my talk. Oh, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha